All right, so I'm back. I uh, I made a false promise last time. I said uh, next up was gonna be lasting and all that kind of fun stuff, but it's not. Um, oh, so I, I stitched this thing down. I don't know if this is, if it was this year or this year. I lost track at this point. I think it probably was this year? Looks a little better. I don't know, whatever one. Um, we gotta set the eyelets though. I already did it on one shoe. You can see what we're aiming for. Doing these uh, copper eyelets and then uh, boot hooks. I had some, I ordered copper boot hooks. They looked more brass than copper. I was gonna use them anyway. Then I bent too many of them, trying to figure out how to properly set them. Uh, so yeah, we're downward to black. These gun metal or black whatever eyelids. But the cool thing is, is I've been setting them. They've been scratching a little bit. And it's actually the same copper color underneath the black. You can kind of see on this one that I uh, that I messed up a little bit. This one's a little bit tweaked. But it's going to be all right. They're a little bit hard to set. They, uh, I don't really have a, a proper eye, uh, boot hook setting tool. So we'll get to that uh, soon. But first things first we have to mark our holes so I'm doing seven eyelets five eyelets and two hooks so I got the dividers here and uh, the way you're gonna want to do is you're gonna do a couple like tests to see how uh, how your eyelets are spacing out on this because you want to basically uh, get it like this and then let's see set it like that and then and then spin on the axis and then just walk your way down until you get the number of eyelets that you want to have. And um, let's see. Da, da, da. See what I'm doing? This is the same pattern as the one on that boot. And it's coming down a little bit low. It's coming down a little bit close to that thing. And the problem is that the right, I want to have one eyelet like dead center of this, like stitching, this stitching square. And, uh, so I'm going to have to cheat it a little bit where I put one dead center there. And then so if I walk right down from there, it's going to be a little too close to uh, to the next one. There's a little bit of extra space cheated inside these two uh, just to get things to line up properly. I think this is all set to be... Yeah, so this is... Yeah, this is set to be the right distance. I just did this with trial and error on the last boot. There's no magic uh, tactic to what I'm doing here other than just being a little careful so I poke the one made a mark for the one in the center and I come make a mark right there where I think that one should be and then one two oh that's three so four five six That's about right. So I made the little dots. I'm gonna do them on the other side first before I move on to the next step so I can just do it all at once. So one dot right in the center of that square that I made and then a little bit. One, two, or actually three, again, four. cheat that one up a tiny bit just to keep it away from that stitch line it's a little little close anyway um so yeah i'm just gonna so there was a slight delay between this video and the last video which you guys aren't gonna notice because i haven't uploaded any videos in a while i've just been storing on my phone and uh gonna upload them eventually um, but I didn't have the right hole punch for the eyelets. I didn't have the right size. So I had to buy some new hole punches. Got them on Amazon is like 15 bucks for a set. They're not the best in the world, but they're not the worst in the world. Um, 
that worked fine. Uh, it should technically be about a three millimeter hole punch for these guys, but I'm using a two millimeter hole punch because it's since the layer, leather is so thick, you can see that like tapers out right there a little bit. And uh, anyway, it, it's gonna fan out the hole a tiny bit as I go through it. But anyway, I'm gonna go on those dots that I I'd be a little bit careful about it because you can really mess up a lot of work at this point if you're not careful. You should be very careful during this step. Uh, yeah, I mean, from here on out, we're doing things that, like, a big mistake can ruin a lot of work. These are difficult because you have to kind of work around the shoe. You don't want... You want to be careful that if you don't, like, punch. If you have it, like, too flat, a piece of... Another part of the shoe can be underneath this and suddenly you just punch through multiple layers of your shoe. You don't mean to. Let's see. You want to be careful not to drive it too far because it's just going to widen the hole out even more. So you're trying to drive it just enough to go through and not anymore. Um, I have this thing, this, we're going to use this layer, it's called a crimpodile? Crocodile? I don't know. But it could punch holes in this, which would be nice, but it's just a tiny bit. This, these two layers of leather are just a little bit too thick. I could like wedge it around, but it scratches the leather up, and I don't really want to do that. That was a good, good round going through. There we go. You get kind of a feel for how many hits you need to, to go through. Kind of creating some bulges too in the leather around the eyelets where it's pushing things out a tiny bit and we're gonna flatten those out with the hammer before we punch the eyelets there's also a couple small tech they're not punch the eyelets set the eyelets that one went through a little too far i'm sure it's nice nicely shaking the camera too as i'm doing all this So be careful with these cheap Chinese punches because sometimes they can get your finger a little bit on these sharp edges. They're not very, that one didn't even go all through all the way. It kind of punched it out, but not enough. All right. With the eyelets that I'm using, you could actually set more than seven because they're they're pretty small. So you, you could fit another one or two in there if you wanted to do like that that look of like nine close eyelets. Uh, but I'm I'm happy with this. I'm happy with seven, especially with the boot hook look. And these eyelets are kind of small. I think they're three eighths. Does that sound right? I don't know. Uh, I'll look it up. See what we ordered. But because they're small, um, I have I think I have a paper right here somewhere that says what they are. What does this say? Beadsmith. Three sixteenths. Three sixteenth eyelets. Uh, I would have probably had I had the opportunity gotten a slightly longer shaft on them, but I'll show you what's up with that in a second. Up 
properly have yet. You want to do this on some kind of poundo board or thick, you know, piece of leather just so you don't damage your tools. Even if they are cheap, you're still going to want to use them again. start to try to fudge it a little bit this way just to get that last eyelet a little less crowded to be in without making spacing look a little bit too obvious. I don't know how that one is actually closer to the end. It should all be pretty uniform. But it ain't. Them's the brakes. Alright, let's do this finish again. Alright. Just being the ass. Alright. So I was just tugging this thing out of. I think it's really jammed in there. So yeah, we have these all punched out. Um, and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna kinda just flatten them out of it. I was actually supposed to do this over the whole shoe, I think, out on all the stitches. You like set the stitches into their holes like you're gonna That. I made a little bit of a ridge up here there. I can trim it off with an exacto. But I guess once it settled, it wasn't quite as trimmed out as I thought. I'll take a little knife and trim that out. Um, yeah, so these are all flattened out. And then what we have are uh, here's my eyelets, the 3 16th eyelets that are in copper. And they have, oh, I don't have not very many to spare, so I need to make sure I don't lose any. I think one went into this. Yep, there it is. I need to have at least 10. So, let's see if you can see these. I don't know if this will refocus. So yeah, they're copper, they have like the little shaft. Uh, I don't know if they're actually copper. Look behind that, that doesn't look copper to me. Fucking eBay. I tell you, shit is copper. Maybe. Maybe I couldn't set copper ones anyway. Who knows? They might. I don't know much about metals, so it might be too. Too difficult to set in terms of an eyelet, but they'll look fine. Whatever. It is what it is now. So, you're just gonna pop them through with the, the fancy circular side, like the, the side that's already flared out on the top of the boot. So. We want that flare, so we're punching them in through the top of the boot, through the side you're gonna see. You can just put in all, they're snug enough that you can put in all five right now. They're not gonna go flopping out for one side. And we're gonna do, yeah, we can actually probably do all 10. Speed this whole process up. real pain in the ass comes with the boot hooks. I just did the boot hooks on the other boot before I made this video to test out how to do them. And I burned through a lot of boot hooks trying to get those set up. They are a pain in the ass. Okay, it looks like we're gonna have enough.
you definitely gonna wanna have a, don't buy exactly what you need, buy a few more because you're gonna wanna test these out on leathers and make sure they'll go through the proper thickness. So now that we have these all like set in here, nice side out, this side in, come around with like an awl or just something or your fingernail and just push the leather down because we want that lip to be coming through as much as possible because what's gonna happen is it's gonna curl around. We're gonna bend it outward so that it catches the leather. So you want it, the leather to be down as far as possible around each of these eyelets. So that's one side, I'll press down. Yeah, because sometimes they get caught on that second layer of leather. If you really need it all to poke through, it'll probably still hold even if you don't do this, but it's not gonna look as good as, and it might actually not hold. things I just learned from buying extra eyelets, putting them through scrap, eventually figure out what works, what doesn't. And so, now that I'm pretty much done with this one little thing there, all right, these guys are all set through. There's two ways to really do this. Um, so, I have a crimpidile, a crocodile. It was 20 bucks on Amazon or something. If you don't want to do that, there's uh, this tool. We're gonna to be using it for the, the boot hooks later. It's, uh, if you can see that, it's like flared out at the end. Will it focus? It's not gonna focus. Anyway, it's like a little nub flared out and you can put it on the back of one of these. And then you take a little, they usually come with a little anvil. I don't know where it is. Um, I'm just using it around here somewhere. This is a little curved piece of metal. I wonder if I lose that in like the last 10 seconds. Oh, here it is. Looks like a coin. I have the coins for a reason too. So this is this little concave uh, piece of metal and you'll just pop that down here. You'll put this on the back and uh, you'll whack the back of this to flare out the back of the eyelid. And you're gonna wanna practice that a lot because too much and uh, you're gonna like split the metal of the eyelid, eyelet too little, it won't stay in sp its spot, it won't stay in the leather. I'm gonna use this thing, I have a, a crimp and dial that I was messing with the settings, I found out like, you, this thing pulls out and then rotates to different uh, eyelet sizes and like flare types down here on the bottom. But I got it all set, you'd have to mess around with it for your particular eyelets. And then you just come in and you poke the top in the top of the eyelet, give it a squeeze, bam, eyelet is flared out and set perfectly. So if you're gonna be making a lot and you're using eyelets that can fit this size of a device, it's not a bad purchase. I kind of regretted it at first. I was like, man, why did I buy this? I didn't need this. But, uh, after setting all these eyelets yesterday, or I did this boot yesterday for the eyelets, but uh, you can see they just set really nicely. They're in there really good. They're not gonna pull out. And they look good. Saves me a lot of hammering. You also wanna be careful not to put too much power through this thing because you can mess them up and then they're bitch to get out if you flare them out too much. There. All set. That was easy. Cool. Now, the uncool part. So, here are the... I'll put these eyelids back. I need to... I'm in the process of organizing. I know I say that every video, but I really am. 
Um, so here's that the boot hooks I didn't end up using. These brass ones, these brass thingy jigs. They were supposed to be copper, but they bend. They're bending super easy. I just like could not get them to set without completely tweaking. Uh, but the thing is, I don't have a boot hook setter, which is like an anvil. So these are the ones I'm gonna be using. The anvil will come in and it'll hook through this slot and it'll prevent you from crushing the boot hook as you set it, which is really nice. They're really expensive though, because they're a very highly specialized tool. Like it's not like a piece of magic or anything, but like, you know, they only sell how many of them, so a few of them that they have to charge a lot. So we're doing it like this getaway, which is I found out these boot hooks are about the size of two nickels thick. So I'm shoving in two nickels into this boot hook. And give them a little like, tamp down with this thing. And so now that's pretty much solid. Those things are really in there, those nickels. And then we're gonna pop it through so that you, it's in the right spot, you know? And we do the same thing where we make sure all the leather is, we make sure the shaft is going through the, all the layers of leather and the leather is pressed down as far as possible around the shaft of this boot hook. All right, that's about as good as it's gonna get. If they had a little bit longer, I would be okay with that, but they aren't, it's fine. And uh, now we have that flared tool that I was showing you earlier, and we're gonna put it right in the back. And these things actually take a decent walloping. I'm not even gonna use the pound dough because I think it absorbs some of the energy that I'm trying to, to use. So I'm going straight to the marble. Um, marble, anvil, just making sure the shot is, you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to be whacking this. And it's going to shake the camera because the camera's on the table, it's getting whacked, but, oh well. See, the, these things are strong, like that's only a tiny bit of flare out. Just gotta make sure the boot hook's not getting warped and crushed underneath there on that anvil. All right, I think that's gonna be enough flare out on this one. Then we get to wedge these. You can see that, I don't know, you can see that kind of tweaked out. It's not as much as in, in uniform as that, but I think it's gonna stay in place, which is the main part of this. If I ever get into the professional, if I ever start making these to sell to people, I'm going to either not do boot hooks or find some sort of better tool for it. I'm rotating the boot hook a little bit. Not great, but not terrible. They can rotate. All right. Boot hook set. Minimal scratching to the boot. Um, oh. That's not good. I think this is actually pulling through. Yeah, this boot hook pulled through. It ended up, yeah, not, just kind of bending and flattening, not really flaring outward. Hmm. Wish I had a better tool than this one. This one. Well, that didn't work out. Let's try again. We got a couple extra boot hooks. I'm gonna be really upset if I have to take out all the boot hooks on the other one. If I run out of boot hooks on this boot, how many, how many boot hooks do I have? Actually, I, they may have run out. I have two here. Shit. Oh. 
and no. I only have three blue hooks left with that. Um, that boot hook may have been do or die. That's really disappointing. So, I'm gonna have to go think about this, whether I wanna pull the boot hooks out of the other boot. Oh wait, so I have one? No, yeah. That one's jacked. This one's jacked. I need to throw these away. So I don't have all these messed up boot hooks just floating around. Hmm. Poor planning on my part. I have some brass ones, but I don't want to mix color. That's just a step too far. Well. I may end up pulling the boot hooks out of this boot. They're pretty secure. I may. This one doesn't feel secure. That one feels secure. That one feels secure. Hmm. I really am angry about this. I may have to buy a whole another bag of boot hooks just to get one more. That's going to be a big delay. The one good thing about boot hooks is that if I want to move on to the next step, I can do, it doesn't, I don't need those for the last thing. I can put boot hooks in at any time. The shoe can be like done. So I may end up doing that. It would be such a bummer to like rip the shoe though after being done. Despair. I wouldn't have pulled that out if I had known that I was on the last hook. Alright, you guys don't have to watch me look for boot hooks anymore.